welcome to 10 Things We Hate about The Offspring. We've done 10 Things We Love, we so don't go mad. You should know this by now. We've done so many of these. Uh, 10 Things For Me, 10 Things From You, all about The Offspring. I'll get us started again. Yep. Now, you said something in the love video that put my ears up, because I had something to hate that kind of made me go, oh, okay. The first two albums, The Offspring and Ignition, just aren't very good. Oh, see, I quite like them. Oh, especially, see, especially Ignition out of the two. Ignition out of the yeah. two, yeah. But I don't think they're very good. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> Agree to disagree on that one? Mm. It's not poppy enough for you, mate. Yeah, that's what it is. I needed my <laughs> more... Punk, pop, yeah, pop, not enough. I needed pop. a whinier voice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, my first one then. Sad to say now, but Self-Esteem, the song. Uh-huh. Uh, I recognise it as being a great song. Yep. I do. Um, but it's also a song I actively avoid now for two main reasons. One, simply because it's madly overplayed. Of course, like, absolutely. To, to ridiculous points. There are so many good songs on Smash. Play something else, people. Mm-hmm. You know? Um, but it's also madly overplayed in friend circle for years because Smash was the album that meant mainstream. Yeah. And Self Esteem was the song that the mainstream latched onto first. <laughs> Secondly, now as it actually represents the song that my non-metal friends would always claim to be as a song that means they like metal. Yep. So if I say, you know that whole we get with Metallica, you get stuff like that, you go, oh, you listen to metal? Oh, do you know that uh, song Self-Esteem? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Dude, fuck yeah. off. <laughs> yeah. You want to yeah. show your chops, you go, do you, have you heard Kill Boy Powerhead or something yeah, like that? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? No, I agree. Yeah. I, I, I have a lot of love for it, but it is what we've said in a couple of these in the past. It's just an overplayed song. Yeah. If it comes on, like as say, soon I, as that la la bit, I'm switching it over. I recognise it. You know, I've got a lot of love for I've got a big pass from it. Yeah. A song from so many parties, man. Yeah. I recognise it's a great song, but I wouldn't. I, I doubt I'll ever listen to it again now. That's, I'd, I'd avoid it. It's yeah. Like, it's a sad, sad situation. It is a sad situation. Another sad situation. Since Conspiracy of One, I've not loved an Offspring album. I've liked albums and I've loved individual songs, but that's about it. Yeah. 19 years ago. Fuck. Yeah, it's a long time, isn't it? Yeah, and it's the truth of it. Decades, when I looked yeah. at everything that came afterwards, Rise and Fall, uh, Bloody and Grace, uh, Splinter, I was like, I like songs. Yeah. Ooh, that's not good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> that stupid line at the start of Pretty Fly for a White Guy. Which one? Which one? <laughs> example of the... Uh, so this isn't me being clever this is me figuring out what it was for research I knew the song that it came from mm. but um, this next line so it's a quasi German nonsense phrase uh, Gunter Glieben Glauten Globen oh. which is actually also used by Def Leppard in the song Rock of Ages uh, it was basically chanted by Def Leppard as a replacement for the traditional one two three four oh. I fucking hate it yep. I absolutely hate it and there are things about that song I despise. There are things about that song I like, mainly the Silver Bikini Girls. Yeah. <laughs> but that bit there, I can't even start that song. It's unbelievable how much it makes me cringe. Great, yeah. yeah. It grates. Well, you brought it up now, so I'm going to throw mine because, of course, I have this. I hated it. I hated it as a teenager. I hate it even more now. It was overplayed to fuck, mm. and I hated it. It wasn't like, oh, I just grew to dislike it. Pretty fly for a white guy. That it was a fucking party anthem for people that thought they were into rock music and yeah. shit like that. Fuck you, Offspring. Fuck you. I'm glad it made you loads of money, but fuck you. Yeah, yeah, no. I mean, I've, I've, I hate it as much as you do. As yeah. Much that. I've got another one on it. Oh, so do I. Um, so I just wrote that. I hate that it's been over two decades since it's been released and people are still aware of it. Like it's a Ugh. modern song. Ugh. It's kind of like, it's kind of become, it's become a bit of like an Enter Sandman to me to, to a degree. Maybe not as I don't hate Enter Salmon as much. Yeah. You know what I mean? But it's that, a song that I actively avoid. But it's also the song that non-metal fans go to any time you say you like The Offspring. So where I said about self-esteem, this is the one for everything. So anyone no, anyone in the world who listens to music knows the song Pretty Fly for a while. Oh, right? yes. They don't necessarily know The Offspring, but they know that song. Yep. And I just think, like, 20 years ago, Ugh. man. Why is it even still being talked about these Absolutely. days? Absolutely. Absolutely. Honestly. Yeah, we hate that song. Yeah. <laughs> um, although I praised it on the love thing, the gloss of Americana and the moving away from a more raw punk sound, um, it's really obvious on Americana, you know, and it was the punk, rawer stuff that got me into them. 
it's hard for me to get too critical of it because I do like yeah. Americana and stuff like that. But it is a sort of, oh, yeah. Particularly, they never ever really went back backwards again. It no, was always no. Americana style for, for the foreseeable future. Yeah. Um, I hate that they were regulars on Top of the Pops. Ha! <laughs> yeah. At least five times that I could find videos for songs that, that included Want You Bad, Pretty Fly, of course, mm -hmm. and Original Prankster. And I guess for me, this is a true mark of a band's change. When you're a band I like with a punk attitude suddenly miming on top of the pops. That's, that's not cool. Yeah, there was a point where appearing on top of the pops was cool, but the area you're talking about was not it. No. No, you're talking <laughs> going back to the 80s and yeah. stuff like that. Okay. Um, why don't you get a job? Now we talked about this in the love video and it's not that I hate this track. I think it's incredibly catchy. However, my barometer of whether a track is, oh, that's not great, is whether I think of our sisters and I think, would they like this song? <laughs> and then I think they'd love this song. They mm. probably do like this song. I'm sure one yeah. in particular would be able to sing parts of it to us. Yeah. That's not good. That's not good. <laughs> yeah. No, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. So I'm gonna start hammering them a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> you've been really, really, really nice. Yeah, um, they are credited with bringing punk to the mainstream. Mm. Not alone. But okay. I think a huge part of it. Right. Um, arguably the biggest part of it, I think. I don't know. It's hard to tell. Smash was the one that really smashed the mainstream. Absolutely. Although they changed a lot after it. But I don't think they did anything wrong on Smash. No. Uh, but it just captured the imagination. of Right everybody. time, right place, right music. Yeah. So, I, you know, so to me, everywhere I read about them, it always uses the words credited with bringing punk to the mainstream. And I don't see why that's a good thing, um, personally. Mm -hmm. Right. So first of all, the minute punk hits the mainstream, it's, not punk it's a huge argument that's not punk. Yep. I mean, that is the point of punk. It's anti-mainstream. Yeah. anti establishment. As anti soon as it's mainstream, punk is dead. So, I mean, I'm okay with the fact that they succeeded. That's not what I'm saying here. But I don't understand why people use that line, credited with bringing punk to the mainstream. <coughs> why don't they say, well, okay, this is probably unfair. I said, why don't you credit them with destroying punk and turning it into commercial? <laughs> <That's>, uh, <laughs> or why not just say something like, they are credited with the creation of the pop punk genre. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That whole line, it's not really their fault that people write that line, but that line credited with bringing punk to the mainstream it doesn't make sense in my head it sounds destructive you, yeah yeah or oh, punk yeah you know so so to me it's a negative it's like oh you know it's weird some people go oh wow that's an amazing thing to have your record and it, well, to me i think it's like they're insulting you to go no well we credit you with bringing punk to the mainstream yeah yeah, yeah you did it terrible, yeah terrible people <laughs> <laughs> right so in the similar vein of pretty fly for a white guy so i always thought it seemed like offspring was trying to always on the albums that followed americana Find a track. Do another track that was in a similar vein. And a conspiracy of one, they did one. Yeah. That I fucking hate. Not as much as Pretty Fly, but I can't stand original Prankster. Oh, yeah. And there's a particular part I don't, and it's the other guy, the, the guy they've got guest in. Original Prankster. Yeah. Shut the fuck up! Yeah. Can't stand that song. And they would continue to do this over and over again, where they always were putting one of these weird songs in. Yeah. Like, as if they thought they could redo Pretty Fly. Pretty Fly was a one-time only deal. Yeah. You know? But don't like the original Prankster. I hate the video to it as well. Yes! The Just fucking video. Little, little kid running around putting shit in his hand. Because like so. he's such a prankster. Yeah. Okay. This kind of contradicts one that you said, but I don't know this for a fact, so I'm going to have to say that the thing that you said in the love video is probably more likely to be accurate. Go on, then. Okay. I have never seen them live. Right. However, I have watched a lot of videos of them live, and I do know people who have seen them live outside of you. I've actually heard that modern offspring cannot hit the notes that in they for their older songs okay. at all. Um, one person in particular who saw them, oh my god, this would have probably been like Redding and Lees or something like that back yeah. in time. And it was when Splinter was just come out, and while they were okay then with a lot of their old songs, they couldn't do Splinter. Um, and I know people that have seen them after Splinter and then when they try to do something like self-esteem, you just can't hit the notes. Really? No, I'm not saying that's a bad thing. People age. You know, that's that's just the lie. Yeah, we, we, yeah, we know this. You yeah, know, it's not that. But I guess the problem I have is that even his modern music, he still sounds as high pitch. Yep. So if he can't hit those notes live, 
is he achieving that tone with studio help? Right. If you can't hear it live, yeah, of course. Cause Do you know what I mean? And that's all it is. Is I question, like, this isn't about a pass or anything like that. If I saw the offspring today, my hearing would be expecting to hear his self-esteem yep. voice, that side of um, tone. And from what I gather, from little bits I've seen, and it's in a universal agreement, he maybe cannot actually do that anymore. I wouldn't be surprised. It's been 20 odd years. Yeah, I get what you're saying. You know? I'm just trying to think. I know self-esteem was played. It's My memory is vague. I generally can't say for sure whether it is the case or not. All I remember is I fucking loved it. So, but then I don't know if that was because I was seeing the offspring alive. Yeah, whether yeah. Or not. And I was just. So this is the thing you've seen it. Uh, I haven't. I'm only going by other people's comments and yeah. by a couple of YouTube clips I've seen. If you actually, you can have a look on YouTube about some bad offspring performances, and there's quite a few videos on there of him kind of just talking words at parts, right. like parts of songs that normally go very high. Right, because you can't do it's it. It's not necessarily a diss. Because I just get that it happens with age. It's more about the fact that you should also be changing on your records. You, you know, you yeah. can't make the same tone as thirty years ago in your record, but not do it live unless that record's being yeah, you manipulated just change it. to make yeah. you sound like you used to sound. I agree. I agree. Yeah, you've got to change if you can't yeah. do it anymore. Um, Splinter, bad album. I like one song. What's the one that you like? Race Against Myself. That's it. Yeah. I looked through it again, and I was like, shit. I only really li- like. Sorry, lose a better terms. I love one song. The other is some that are all right, but I was like, shit, that's a bad album. Like when I'm not looking at it and going, there's five or six, yeah. that's not good. And it's yeah. Race Against Myself, which is a banger. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, there's support of file sharing, otherwise mm. known as theft. <laughs> that's quite funny. This is an actual statement from Dexter Holland in the year 2000. Go. Very short. I don't know what Metallica's motives or reasons are for what doing what they are doing, but as far as we're concerned, we export we support the exchange of MP3 files for free online. And then I just wrote, well, Dexy boy, Metallica's motives were to prevent theft of intellectual property and to try to keep the music industry afloat, and I wonder how much he would regret that comment had Napster won and all his music was given away for nothing today. It's interesting. We did discuss in a love video. My perspective yeah. was that, I'll repeat it here in case you haven't watched a love video. My perspective was that as a band should be allowed to have the right if they so choose to give them music, but it has to be controlled. They have to give it out on their own app, their website and so on. Yeah. And that where you with there, I stand against that. You know I do. Yeah, 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 no, yeah, exactly. The, the, I, you I, can't I stand against it as well. We 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 do. And I, I I am a hundred percent convinced that if Napster had won, I don't even know if we'd have festivals and shows anymore. I don't know if it would just be the only way we got music was through YouTube. Yeah. And putting up stuff yeah. that way. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah. You can't sell a single record. Yeah, because it's, 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 it's carte blanche. You can just go there. No one's, no one, no, it's no longer illegal or anything like that. And I like think that. the thing that annoys me about this stuff, and they're not the only band to do, do this. This isn't only The Offspring. I've seen plenty of people outside of metal and inside of metal back in the day dissing Metallica. Yeah. Daring to make this stand. I honestly believe that on, if they were to be completely honest, they would say, yeah, well, Metallica were right, and that was our younger self. Yeah, we made a mistake. Yeah. You know, and actually, we were probably will never come out and say it, but secretly, Frank fuck Napster didn't win. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, because that version didn't happen. Drastic. Yeah, it would have been fucked up. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, very good. Yeah. Um, another album one, straight again. Rise and Fall, Rage and Grace. Same problem as Splinter. I only really love one song. Half Truism. Right. I don't even really know this album very well at all, but I have listened to it and that's how much I liked it because I can't even remember yeah. a song from it. I just, know I definitely didn't replay it much. It's just like modern albums of Offspring just don't do it for me. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I'll do a jokey one and then I've got two less jokey ones. Okay. Um, I hate that I can't look at his stupid little spiky haircut without picturing Rob Flynn and From the Day. <laughs> there are some of the hairstyles. <laughs> yeah. Except Dexter's still rocking his and modern yeah, day. Yeah, that's yeah. the sadder thing. Dexter has some mad haircuts and to be fair it suits him perfectly. Yeah. But I can't look at him without instantly just seeing a flash of Rob. Yeah and you don't want to see that. <laughs> so. Mine's kind of jokey as well. Offspring. That's a whole lot of woes, years and years and years yeah. in their music. Um, a whole lot of them, you know. Get used to whoa, yeah. whoa you know, and it's stuff. Because I remember saying, like, on the love video about how strong the lyrics. Yeah, are. you're absolutely right. Half the self-esteem is just nah, 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 yeah. nah. nah. And yeah, I, and I went pretty nuts at Blink One Eight Two for daring to do that in all yeah. the small things. <laughs> um, apparently, in, in the, I think you probably would have read the same thing. We, we it looks like we did our research in similar places. Didn't one of the other punk bands do a song 
Three one one woe for the woes or something. Oh like no, that, I missed which that. Was about man. the offspring and their overuse of. Oh, really, I didn't. That's good. Um, they were signed. They were one of the first bands signed to um, his label. Oh okay. And, but they're all friends, so it's all done. In a good bit of way. poking fun, yeah. yeah. Okay, so these these are legit, uh, as far as I'm aware. But these are, I guess, big examples of lacking in punk attitude. Oh, okay. Well, things that happen, I just think they leave a little bit of a sour taste, you know. Um. In 2014, they reclaimed the rights to all their music from Columbia. Yep. Their contract expired. And oh, they now had the ownership going with of all this. their rights. Instantly, upon owning their own music again, they put them up for sale to other record labels, selling them for $35 million. And don't get me wrong, good business, but it's quite anti-punk and anti-rock. The idea of, can you imagine, like even the super rich bands like Metallica selling their rights to their music to a corporation? Mm-hmm. I mean, most bands I hear, they're always fighting to get their rights yeah, back. Yeah. The Offspring, this big punk band, this massive name, finally get the rights back and then just turn to the highest bidder. Yeah, that's what they did. 35 yeah. million, I saw the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. I can't remember the label they sold them to, though. I know there was a, like there was interest from Sony. Everyone was involved in it. But, but there you go, yeah. The argument always stands, though, their music, their rights, right? Yeah, no, absolutely. That's They've it. got the right to it. And it makes good business sense. It's just quite anti Oh, it's what, very. This is the attitude that they try to exude. It, absolutely, yeah, it is. You can't go around telling everyone how punk you are. I want to give my music away for free while secretly you're trying to sell the rights. Oh yeah, for thirty-five million quid. The difference of nineteen years, eh? Yeah, yeah. there you go. Yeah, yeah. yeah we want uh, to give it away for free. Now we want thirty-five mil. Is your last one serious? Uh, serious enough. Right, do that then, because my last one is not. Okay. This is kind of in the same vein again, anti-punk, sort of like you know, not doing what you tell people you are. So while they struggled to make an impact in their early career pre-Smash, yep. and Dexter has actually pointed out himself that, I think somebody once said to him that, oh, they hated doing festivals because they played to 20 people in a tent. Right. And he laughed and said, for the last five years, we played to 20 people every show. Okay, yeah, cool. Right. Um, then finally, they got picked up by the, uh, sorry, they still got picked up by the indie label Epitaph. That's right, yeah. Which is a much bigger label these days. Oh, Epitaph, so back, yeah. Back in the day, it was a very, very small indie label. And the main reason they got picked up to it was because it was run by Dexter's mate, Brett Gurevitz, yep. who was from Bad Religion. Yep. And he signed them up because they were pals. All right? Not because they were selling well, not because they were doing anything. They were selling no tickets to shows, anything like that. The minute Smash went big, it became a record holding sales for an independent label. Yeah. No labels ever been sold as much as smash mm -hmm. did and as soon as it hit that fame they instantly ditched epitaph and joined columbia okay instantly okay um there was apparently about a month worth of discussion after they went multi-platinum or mm -hmm. whatever it was and offspring quit epitaph joined columbia so that was around the smash time yeah and this is the time when we would say they were still quite punk <sighs> now i don't know this is a bit i don't know how much of that was maybe like kind of always in the plan maybe even the guy that was running Epitaph going oh guys jump on Columbia the soon, the soon it could be big done for exactly you. right yeah but it just seems like so anti what they're saying you know about we're there for the fans we want to give the music away for free everything like that they they made Epitaph a huge name by, by saying Smash they Epitaph obviously did a good job for them yeah because they sold Smash fucking amazing yeah and then Instantly, within something like four or five weeks of it, of it hitting a certain status, they were on Columbia. It's really hard without knowing the details. Yeah, it's hard. but it just it's something about it doesn't sit quite right. Mainly because of the timing of it. It's not conspiracy at one time or anything like that. Yeah, this is as Smash is becoming a hit. The question is, is what was Epitaph? Yeah, like I've never read anything that says Epitaph. I read that Epitaph took a two-page fucking advert out in a major was it Rolling Stone? Yeah, that had all the staff doing a middle finger over the album, yeah. saying we did it. Yeah, because um, obviously they were denied. So I don't know as who wrote. Was it like, look, we can't afford, like we can't pay you this, we can't give you this. Yeah, yeah. As soon as someone big comes along, jumping them. Yeah, it you might have been I mean? done completely friendly and done in the right yeah. way. Yeah, yeah. Because I've never read any bitterness from Epitaph. But if you're if you're this like punk man who's never really made it and you're trying to make it and you're on your mate's label and you want to give your music away for free and you sell shows twenty tickets at a time, why would you even care about moving to a bigger label? The thing is like unforgivable because we've all done it and what I think they should be doing is they should smash the sell it well, who gives a fuck? We don't do it for record sales. That's the punk attitude back then, isn't it? Punk, that's that's punk, what they tell you they are. Punk proper dead already, man, by that point. Yeah. Yeah, never forget Cradle and the one Sony album deal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, my last one. Do you do you know the song Cruising California, Bumping in My Trunk? I know you hear that bass, Bumping in My Trunk. No, I, hate it, I hate it already, though. Right? <laughs> it's <laughs> one of those Pretty Fly style yeah. songs of the modern albums. I hate that I love this song. Oh, you like it? 
I hate that it's so fucking catchy that I, as soon as I re-listened to it today, doing this list, I was singing it afterwards. I was like, no, I haven't heard this song in years. I can't stop humming that damn fucking chorus. It's absolute shit. Arguably not worse than Pretty Fly. God, no, it's not worse. But up there with that. No, but really God, it, it it gets in there. I'll avoid it then. You've got I'll to listen. It, like you should listen play. to it tomorrow. I'll give it a listen. Yeah, maybe. Just to see if you think it's stick as catchy. A, stick a bit on the end here. Oh, of course. Of yeah, course. We'll get stuck in all of you. <laughs> I'm living easy, cruising, bumping my Huntington Beach because the sun will shine. We have a good time. They all line up for a bump and grind. And the girl that you want is directly out in front. And she's waving her caboose at you. You sneeze at you. She calls you out in I know you heard that. There we go. There's our 10 things we have by the offspring. It's say it was a struggle, but there we got there. Yep. Make sure you check out the other 10 things. The love, the hates, lots and lots of them now. Great stuff, we think. Um, hit that like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.